What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, we're talking springtime shallow water fishing. Those fish are moving up into the shallows. Today we're gonna cover some of my favorite baits, how to fish them, and maybe even catch a few on camera. Let's go. So I am back in Tennessee, five weeks, 8,200 miles out to the West Coast, down to Texas, all over the United States. We had an awesome, awesome road trip, but I am happy to be back home in Eastern Tennessee. But as you can see, it is springtime. So today we got JD out here with me. He's gonna be doing some fishing, and I'm gonna kind of talk to you guys about some of my favorite shallow water uh, springtime baits, because as you can see, Chickamauga is full pool. You know, springtime, you got the flowers are budding, you got all the birds chirping, it's warm weather, and those fish are coming into the shallows. You know, we're talking less than eight feet. As you can see, the water, like I said, is full pool, and it's really stained. You know, shallow water fishing, those fish are really susceptible to changing conditions. You know, weather, storms, water levels, changes, all that sort of stuff. So we're gonna talk about all that. Let me go ahead and throw the camera up on the tripod. I'll go through some of these baits, talk about when, where, and why. Here we go. All right, guys, so I got the camera set up on the tripod, and what I wanted to do is just kind of go through uh, my entire lineup for today's fishing. You know, people ask us all the time, you know, what are your confidence baits? What do you throw when you're trying to figure out the fish. What do you try and, you know, what baits are you throwing to try and figure out where the fish are, how they're reacting, do I need to be going finesse? So I'm gonna cover all that today. I'm gonna go through probably nine or 10 different setups just because springtime, shallow fishing, that opens up the entire tackle box. You know, typically I'm starting off with reaction because I wanna find where those schools of fish at, fish are at, so I'm throwing vibrating stuff, flashy stuff, square bills, swim baits, you know, and then when like, like today's, today for instance, you got high water, so now you're talking about flipping and pitching into uh, sunken trees or timber, you know, brush that's in the water, you know, you got your Texas rig worms, shaky heads, any of that type of stuff, so the finesse stuff, so let's go ahead and jump into it, and uh, hopefully Jitty can catch, catch, uh, catch one or two on the on the chatterbait while we're talking about it. So again, right off the bat, so, uh, springtime, let me jump on the trolling real quick. Springtime is all about covering water and finding those schools of fish. One just blew up over here. So we got bait fish blowing up back here or, or spitting. Um, that's always a good sign, right? Anytime you're, you're fishing and you're around the bait, that definitely puts the odds in your favor. So like I said, this time of year, it really opens up the tackle box. You know, your finesse fishing, if need be, but mo more importantly, your reaction baits. So your square bills, your crank baits, your swim baits, your weedless stuff, your flashy swimmers, all that stuff, because depending on what the conditions give you, different baits will shine. And that's why I have, you know, we always get asked, how can you have so many fishing rods, right? And we know, bass fishermen know that uh, the higher, the more you get into it, the more you go down the rabbit hole, hole, the more you get technique specific combos, you know, specific combos for your square bills, specific combos for your swim baits, your weedless swim baits, your treble hook swim baits, your top water swim baits, you know, we can go on and on and on. But to try and simplify it for you, I've kind of broken it down into two categories, uh, reaction and finesse, because really that's, that's the two main categories. Uh, and again, this time of the year, we're talking about speed to find those fish. You know, we're not talking spawn, we're talking pre-spawn. As these fish are coming out here on Chickamauga, they're coming out of the river channel, they're coming back into these big uh, arms, these big backwater lakes, if you will, and uh, they're gonna disperse out here. So you guys can kind of see, you see out here we got some docks. That's perfect for uh, jigs, for Nico rigs, drop shots, that sort of stuff, swim baits, chatter baits, that sort of stuff on the outside. But if you want to really break it down, then you'll go with your, your slower finesse baits. But you can see we got some docks, we have rock piles, we have uh, big bays over here. This will actually eventually fill in with lily pads. We got underwater points, secondary points. Sorry guys, I'm all over the place with the tripod. Just want to show you guys. We have uh, offshore rock piles, 
but all of it is less than eight feet. So those, that's what I'm considering shallow because uh, these fish are moving out of that deep water, that 25 to 30 into the shallows to come get ready to spawn. Enough talking, let's show you the baits and how to fish them. Uh, I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna go with my confidence baits and uh, obviously adjust this list of baits uh, according to you your confidence in the different techniques I'm gonna talk about and your fishery. But right off the bat, I'm gonna go with some kind of glide bait. You know, it could be a six inch bait, it could be an eight inch bait, it could be a 10 inch bait, but uh, hands down, the number one glide bait for us is gonna be that S Waver 168. This is actually called the Warden. 100% um, confidence in this, so many big fish on it. Uh, but the best thing about this bait, hopefully the wind's not too bad for you guys, we got the wind picking up. The best thing about this bait, is not only does it catch them and catch them good, catch them, catch big ones, but it's a great search bait. Today we have really stained water with all those rains, all those creeks flowing, really murked up the water. But typically, springtime when you have that clearer water, even if the fish don't eat or commit to the bait, they will come out and just see what is that. They'll follow it. They'll show you where they are, and uh, that's where the good polarized sunglasses come into play. But they show you where they are. And then if you need to, you can slow down and throw your weightless, you know, Senko or shaky head, something like that. But let's go ahead and throw this out real quick. Jenny, you wanna go to my left rule? Come over here, just throw, go that way. Fire that out there. Again, we're fishing anywhere from, right now we're in four and a half feet. So we're gonna fire that out there. You don't necessarily need to hit bottom, but you're just gonna slowly reel it. Reel, reel, reel. Every five or six handle turns, Give it a little twitch, twitch. That's gonna make that bait dance side to side. And as those bass are tracking it and that, that bait makes a directional change, bam, nine times out of 10, that's where they're gonna, they're gonna hit it. But this is an, a phenomenal bait. You don't really need specialized swim bait gear, <laughs> swim bait gear to throw uh, the, the six inch baits. Obviously, if you get into the bigger ones, you will. But that is hands down my favorite early springtime uh, search bait, that, that glide bait right there. And just like every video, guys, we'll link our favorite combos, favorite uh, setups, baits, colors, all that sort of stuff down below in the uh, video description. Go ahead and throw that out of the way. I'll do these next two together. Um, square bills. You can see right there, I got that little BX Brad on there and the biggie. Again, square bills, this time of the year, as those fish are coming to you, you bank fishermen, you guys, shore-based anglers, those fish are coming out of the depths and they're coming into the bays, shallow water where you can reach them. So this, all this stuff applies to you shore fishermen as well. Pond fishermen take some of the stuff, uh, probably limit some of the, uh, the reaction baits, but it'll apply to you as well. Square bills, again, covering a lot of water. So this point right here, I don't know if you guys can see this out here, See that big chunk rock on the point? So as this point comes out, there's a lot of, you get hung up? There's a, there's a lot of chunk rock on the point and square bills are great for not, for deflecting and not getting hung up. He's throwing this, this, uh, this uh, chatterbait right here. We'll go try and get it. But square bills, you know, when you come down this shoreline, you get to cover a lot of water. You know, you're, you're throwing this thing on a six to one or a seven to one gear ratio reel, and you're just covering a lot of distance. Those fish are gonna move up to those, that chunk rock. You know, as that water warms up, those, those rocks warm up and uh, hold a ton of fish. So in this bay, for instance, obviously he found some rock out here, but in this bay, if you have everything that's kind of mud, and then you have a point with big chunk rock on it, that's where your fish are gonna, they're gonna stage. That's where gonna, they're gonna first move to and then disperse from there. You know, that rock holds heat better than just the mud, mud bottom and it warms up quicker. Plus crawdads, that sort of stuff, love to live in the rock. So a square bill, I typically have two tied on. Uh, typically for me, it's gonna be two different things. It's gonna be, here you go. You wanna go fish from the back real quick? It's gonna be two different things. It's gonna be two different colors, either a natural, like red, you know, crawfish pattern, 
or something bright, something like this, this water clarity right here, something where those fish can see it, really find it. So I would go with something natural, typically either a green or a red, some kind of a craw pattern. And then vice versa, I will go with something bright. Uh, you know, this is like a, a shad color, white chartreuse stripe, something that they could really find in that dingy water and uh, throw something with or without rattles. And depth. Typically, if you can't, go with one that will go a little shallower, two to four foot range, and then something that's like four to six foot range. All right, guys, hopefully this is making sense and, uh, and not blowing through it too, too quickly. Next up are all, well, I will do the chatterbait by itself, and then I'll talk about the, the swim bait and the, the spinner bait. Again, this video is kind of a hodgepodge of baits, but this is my, this is my spring shallow water fishing lineup. This is what I have on the boat to go fishing in these conditions. Go for it, bud. Cast out there. So chatterbait, you know, most of these video or most of these techniques, we've done specific videos um, for each technique. But chatterbait, again, we'll link some of our favorites down below in the video description. Two choices go either natural or that red or shad color, that white, something like that in that dingy water. Keep it simple on your colors. You don't have to get too many. But uh, fire it out there. Again, I'm going to let this thing get close to bottom, if not on bottom. Again, we're fishing four foot or so. I'm going to pop it up, get that blade going, then I'm just going to handle turn uh, fast enough, turn the handle fast enough that I can feel that vibration, that blade kicking. Now what this does, it mimics bait fish, it mimics crawdads, but it has a lot of vibration and those fish, their lateral lines, they can feel it. They can find it in the dingy water if need be. Now a chatter bait is one of those baits that I don't throw a lot in clear water, but today's conditions, absolutely I'm gonna be throwing a chatter bait. We got less than about six inches of visibility. So very, very limited visibility, but that blade on there is gonna be kicking, thumping, and that bright color will allow those fish to find it. Now, if it was clear water, actually, let's stay with muddy. Another great bait for dingy water is gonna be a spinner bait. Again, hopefully you guys are taking notes. If not, down below in the video description, I will link everything. Uh, a spinner bait is, uh, the original Alabama rig, if you will. It is made to mimic a school of bait fish. So this guy right here has a willow leaf blade, spinner bait, gold and silver. It's just made to mimic a small group of bait fish. Uh, so in this type of conditions, the, this water clarity, added flash, added vibration, and you're just gonna fish this. You don't have to let it hit bottom. The benefit of a spinnerbait, you can throw it through treetops, you can throw it in and around bushes, around dock pilings, that sort of stuff. But you're just reeling it every five or six, seven, eight handle turns. Give it a little bit of rod pump, get those, get those blades to change cadence, to change uh, speeds and kind of blow out. And uh, that's a lot of times when you're gonna get your bites. So, you know, you guys will notice a pattern. When we're fishing, we're always adding reel twitches, rod twitches, speed ups, slow downs, rod pumps just to give those baits directional changes and speed changes. Because uh, in our opinion, that's, you know, bass is tracking that bait. As soon as it does something different, it's like, I either have to eat it or leave it. And a lot of times, mo mainly, uh, most of the time, that is when they hit it. Because I think they, they're like, oh shoot, that bait knows that I'm here. So spinner bait fishing is really easy. Again, just like a square bill, you're gonna cover a lot of water. The benefit of the spinnerbait is it's more weedless than a treble hook bait, so you don't get hung up as much. Um, but spinnerbait is a great bait if you have the dingy water and uh, you need some ed added flash or vibration. So chatterbait, spinnerbait, square bill, it's all fun, all power fishing, and uh, catches big ones. The last one I got for you, Last one I got for you before we talk about a little bit about finesse is gonna be some kind 
of smaller swim bait. Now, I'm not talking about your six, eight, 10 inch soft plastic swim baits. I'm talking about a swim bait that you can throw on your favorite jig rod, even a, uh, a medium, medium heavy power spinning rod. This is a little 4.8 swim bait. With that is a, an owner flashy swimmer. And you can see right here, I went with a gold blade. They make it in a gold Colorado blade and they make it in a silver willow leaf blade. The blades have a different action. They have a different thump. Uh, but more importantly, I like to throw the gold in this color of water. Just has uh, more thump and that gold color just really shows in this dingy water. But just like the spinnerbait, fire it out there. You can slow creep it on bottom. You can fish it, you know, four feet off of bottom, say mid column if you're fishing eight feet. But uh, the fish will find it with that added flash with that vibration, the fish will find it. So if your fishery has a lot of bait fish, say it has a lot of uh, a shad in it, and you wanna mimic those, an underspin is a great way to mimic those and, and catch a lot of fish. Very easy to fish. Again, you can cast out there, either slow reel it, just ticking on bottom, or cast out and just start reeling. You know, let those fish come and get it mid column. But uh, that is another great bait so hopefully that makes sense on when and why uh, i like to throw and where i like to throw the different baits again if you're around rock that square bell works really good that chatterbait works works really good if you're around bushes timber uh, that flashy swimmer that weedless swim bait the uh, the spinner bait works great uh, that's where that really shines now let's talk about finesse fishing or flipping and pitching so there's not much you can see right here, but let's just pretend that right over here, there was some flooded bushes. You know, that's gonna be one of the first places these fish come up that, that point. They're, they have that hard chunk rock. You got submerged bushes. You can't be throwing your square bill in that stuff. Yeah, you might be able to take the tops of it, but a good, nice, stout flipping jig. You know, I like to throw something that has a little bit of contrast to it. So either black and blue, green pumpkin, black and blue, something like that. But again, I'm going with a nice flipping jig. Look at the size of that hook on there. You're not gonna bend that out. So when you hook a four, five, six pounder up in those bushes and you jack them, you're not gonna have to worry about bending that hook out, trying to get those fish out of that, uh, that brush pile or bush or whatever you may be fishing. But when you're coming down the shoreline, Again, we don't have a lot to choose from here, but just imagine you had a set of bushes right here and uh, you've already power fished around it. You've already went, granted this is kind of power fishing. You've already reaction fished around it with your square bills, your swim baits, that sort of stuff. Now you really just want to pick it apart. Again, low visibility. So you're going to go in there and you're just going to flip this right around and even into the bushes and see what, what and how big of bass is calling that bush home. But a good, you don't, you don't have to go too heavy. It's not like you're punching, but a nice three eighths, half ounce, something like that flipping jig is a must have because you're gonna be covering a lot of water when you get to that point with a, a submerged bush or something like that that you wanna really pick apart, that, uh, that flipping jig is a must have. The only two other rods I have, the last, last bait I'm gonna talk about before I talk about true finesse is gonna be some kind of flipping bait that's it's Texas rig and uh, not an exposed hook. You can see right here, that's that big bite bait. Um, what's it called? Again, I'll link it down below in the video description. I caught some big ones down in Florida flipping this guy around. Little bullet weight on there, not too heavy, quarter ounce. And uh, same bush. So same bush that you're flipping with that heavy or that heavier jig. It's got an exposed hook. You're having his issues coming through. Go with something like this that's going to be weedless that you can get it in there and get it out of there without getting hung up and that way you can effectively fish that bush without getting hung up and having to go in there and break it off or, or spook the fish out of it. But, but some kind of Texas rig bait. Now that could be a worm, a big Texas rig, eight, 10 inch worm that you're just dragging. Uh, anything like that will work really, really good. Now my last, my last rod that I have uh, given these conditions this time of the year is gonna be a medium action spinner rod. Something where I can effectively fish 
uh, let's say that dock right up there. I want to skip a bait up underneath there. I want to drop shot. I want to throw a Texas rig, something like that. That is why I'm going to always have a little heavier action spinning rod. Again, you're fishing for bigger fish. You're fishing up shallow. You're fishing through stuff, around stuff. You want to have a rod, line, hook, big enough to get those fish out. What's up, bud? Yeah. Uh, so I like to go with either a, a shaky head a Texas rig worm, some kind of drop shot, or a Nico rig. You can see right here, this is a Senko. I have a nail weight in the head of it. Got a weedless hook on there. This is perfect. So as I'm fishing through, fishing through this bay, fishing around these cypress trees, fishing around through these rocks, come to a dock, has a nice shade line, high sun. I just know the fish are gonna be staged up underneath that dock. Now I can slow down. I could skip this bait under there, uh, fish it around the edges, the dock pilings. But a Nico rig, a shaky head, a drop shot, whatever your favorite finesse bait, make sure you bring one of those along with you this time of the year. That way you could really slow down and pick this stuff apart. Guys, I hope that helps. I know I kind of blew through it uh, very quickly. I don't know if this is like a 20 or 25 minute video or so, it feels like it. But uh, this is the time of the year to get out on the water, enjoy the beautiful weather. You know, like I said, out here in Eastern Tennessee, we had a lot of rain the last couple of weeks. Now we got a week's worth of uh, beautiful weather. Sunshine, mid 70s, low 80s, and the fish are gonna be chewing. I kind of talked about it a little bit in the beginning of this video, but uh, shallow water fish are really susceptible to weather, but also water levels. You know, one thing we deal with out here on the TVA is the rise and drop of water. So fish, you know, shallow fishing, as if this water is rising, you guys need to go to the very back. Where that water is coming in and there's moving water, get to the very back and start there and work your way out. You know, those fish, I think you guys, those of you guys that watch the Bassmaster Elite Series on Pickwick, you know, they had the same floods that we had here. Water was up a ton. Guys were literally catching fish uh, where two days prior was five or six feet out of water. So that just tells you, shows you how fast those fish move up and go to the back. So if you are in a high water situation, you have incoming water, follow that high water and go to the very back because the fish will do it as fast and as quick as they can. Now, reversal, as they start dropping that water, those fish are gonna pull out. You know, they're not gonna sit up there in a foot of water when they're dropping the lake six inches to a foot a day, right? So they're gonna back out a little bit. So that's where you're gonna find your creek channels that are going in. Just like you were fishing the, the creek coming, the water flow coming in, now find that same creek channel out a little deeper and fish that with all these baits and you guys will have a ton of success. As always, guys, we appreciate you. If you like this video or learn something from it, please give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to our channel. Again, we appreciate you guys. Have a good one. I'm already, I'm already on board. Nice. Is that hard? Real. You got him. You, oh, you had him, dude.